Hey race fans, I'm Miss Spring Cup Brooke and it's time for a Miss Spring Cup live chat. We're here in Talladega. I'm hanging out with Eric Almaroa. Eric, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for having me. Or should I say, you're welcome here. Yeah, well, this is going to be a great one. Thanks for, uh, oh, so first of all, let's talk about the fact that you guys just landed. Yeah. This morning. Yeah. How was your flight in? It was great. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to catch a ride with Jimmy. Ah. Uh, so I, instead of flying with the team last night and uh, spending another night away from home, I got to leave this morning uh, and get here just in time to see you. Now, is that usual? Do you guys usually fly in this uh, this time of day on this day? or? Yeah, well, I mean, when uh, practice is late on Friday and it's a quick flight, it was only a 45 minute flight or so. So um, those those opportunities, uh, I try and take the, take advantage of, of flying with whoever's flying on a Friday since uh, I don't have my own plane. It's a nice I have, setup. I have, to bum, I have to bum rides. You could always invite the Miss Spring Cups along. Yeah. we totally come with you. But I'm sure you would have missed out on so much work oh, already. Oh, I know. We already have, we're having fun with fans here already today. All right, so we're here to address some fan questions. Yeah. So are you ready for your very first one? I guess. Okay. This one comes from, and I love this name, Ropadope. <laughs> I'm not even quite sure what that means, but here we go. Yeah. What local tracks in Florida did you run at when you were coming up? So when I started racing stock cars, I raced at uh, New Smyrna Speedway. Okay. And I raced at uh, Orlando Speed World in Orlando. Uh, I raced at DeSoto Speedway down, uh, in, it's in Bradenton, Florida. Um, Ocala Speedway. So uh, there's a lot of them, but those were the core group of racetracks. And then uh, Lakeland used to have a racetrack mm -hmm. now it's tore down but uh usa international speedway in lakeland florida so those are my core group of tracks that i raced at uh, the majority of the year and then every once in a while we'd race at uh, saint augustine or hialeah or, or places like that uh Punta Gorda down mm -hmm. uh near uh, sarasota uh just south of sarasota so yeah i raced there's a lot of racing to do in florida and we got to race year round now, is there one track you would go back to today if you could that you just love? I still go miss? back to New Smyrna for Speed Weeks. Okay. Uh, we're down in Daytona uh, for Speed Weeks, and they race uh, nine nights of Speed Weeks at New Smyrna Speedway, um, you know, at the same time that we're in Daytona. So mm -hmm. I still go back there and see all my old friends and check out uh, the racing and stuff there. It's a, it's a great racetrack, and uh, they put on a good show, and Speed Weeks is always fun there. So cool. I, uh, I certainly miss it. Oh, we'll, we'll be back in Florida before you know it. All right, our next question comes from Rubbins Racing. Besides the Daytona 500, or where, or where you will get your first victory, what would be the number one place to win for you? Well, the number one place to win for you, I think, is besides what the, besides the Daytona 500 and besides the first place I'll get my victory. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a tough question that is to a answer. Tough one. <laughs> I mean, those are like um, all right, uh, two first choices. Okay. Yeah. What so do you got? I, I got to count out my first race, which we still don't know where I'm going to win that. And we got to count out the Daytona 500. Okay. I really don't want to count out the Daytona 500. Well, I'm do we sorry. Really have to? I'm sorry, whoever, whoever asked this question. Um, I would love for my first win to be the Daytona 500. But I'd also love for it to be right here in Talladega. That would be uh, just fine with me. So the sooner <laughs> the, sooner the better. Uh, we want to get that 43 car back to victory lane. Um, you know, everybody at Richard Petty Motorsports works really hard, and um, we, we want to go to victory lane. We, we deserve it. Uh, the guys have been giving me really good cars, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully we'll get it done here before the year's out. All right, we're here this weekend. It could be the one for you. Our next question comes from RaceGod43. What is one of your favorite championship moments from any driver in any era? Wow, yeah. I would have to say um, just because it was so exciting and under the circumstances uh, that when Tony won the championship a couple years ago mm. um, when he tied with Carl, you know, just the circumstances, he went into Homestead, he had to win mm -hmm. um, or, you know, he, he had to he had to outrun Carl. But um, if Carl runs second, he had to win to get the bonus points and, and just that whole chase that he had that whole year to win. I think he won five of the 10 chase races just. That's unbelievable to, to show up and have a 50-50 shot of, of winning, um, you know, when you look back at the stats. So it's just, uh, that was an incredible chase run, and, and I think that was uh, something, you know, to go down in the record books, to, mm -hmm. to be that uh, desperate to have to win. And, and Carl ran really good that race and led a bunch, and uh, Tony had trouble, and I think he got a hole in his nose, and they come in and repaired it, and he started in the back and drove back to the front. So uh, when you when you look at all the circumstances, and then he still won the championship, 
uh, that was pretty special. That was a special moment. Now, you've also compared yourself or said that you, you liken your driving style to Tony's, correct? I feel like I do. Um, when I first came into the sport, into, into NASCAR um, at this level, I did a lot of testing at Joe Gibbs Racing, and, mm -hmm. and you know Tony was was the main guy there, and and so when I would go test uh, for the Cup teams and do their R and D testing and stuff, I would look back at Tony's data, and I would really try and um, mirror what I was doing on the racetrack to what he was doing. So I feel like I've picked up a lot um, just looking at data and stuff when I first got into the sport and and being involved at Joe Gibbs Racing with him. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot from him, and and I really try and mold my driving style similar to his. Mm -hmm. That's a good one to look up to as well. All right, our next question comes from Hughes for Prez. Hughes, are you running for president? Wow. Hughes for Prez. All right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Kurt Busch is driving another Talladega Nights scheme this weekend. What scheme from a racing movie would you like to run? <laughs> I, I really like, uh, I guess it was the Mellow Yellow scheme from Days of Thunder. Mm. Um, that was a really cool, uh, cool paint scheme and so was the uh, so was the uh, the pink scheme uh, they had I think a super flow is that right all so, right I love anything pink That's so they cool. had uh, they had a pink and black car I think it was number 46 it was the super flow car that car was pretty cool super so flow. that would uh, that'd be one I'd like to like to run all right I do like that Wonder Bread paint scheme though it is it's pretty it is. fresh it's pretty clean I'd say it's You're very gonna fresh. Say fresh I was gonna say fresh like a fresh loaf of bread like a fresh loaf of bread like a <laughs> white bread just out of the bag yeah mm. Just like that. <laughs> it should be a scratch and sniff, don't you think? Oh gosh. Wouldn't that be nice? New ideas for 2014 scratch and sniff paint schemes. That'd but be good then, for your bacon one. Well, it would, but That'd the problem perfect. is is that everybody would have an excuse to run into you. Oh. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. You'd be like, oh, I just wanted to smell some bacon. Yeah, you're right. Okay, Sorry. maybe we'll have to think about that one a little bit more. All right. Our next question, drive for 524. How do you grade the Gen 6 car this year? That's a good one. Yeah, you know, for us, when we started out, I think everybody was on an equal playing field. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a lot of unknowns. Um, so we, we came into the season on a level playing field with everybody else, and we performed really well. Um, we got off to a really good start. I think in the beginning of the year, we had four or five top tens in a row. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we ran really well at the beginning of the year. And then as the other teams started figuring out and they developed their setups faster, um, we got caught behind um, mm -hmm. we just we didn't keep up with the technology that was changing and so now we're playing a little bit of catch up so I think for us um, the Gen 6 car has been challenging and, and been a struggle for us to keep up uh, to find the speed that we need to mm -hmm. uh, even when we get our cars driving good uh, we just don't have the speed that we need so um, you know I think that's been the struggle for us but you know I think everybody's gotten so good at setting these cars up and and making them so aero dependent. Mm. Um, you know, our cars are, are we're setting track records at every Left racetrack right. we go to, and it's it's all about the aero package that we have. And and the problem is, is that we're all going so fast and we're all running so close to the same speed that uh, it makes it really hard to pass. So I know NASCAR has been working really hard. They had a test at Charlotte on Monday. Uh, they're testing this week at Richmond. Uh, coming up and I think the week after that they're testing at Homestead mm -hmm. to try new ideas for 2014 so I'm really excited about what they're going to come up with uh, to make it uh, more exciting and, and make it to where we can run side by side and and we can pass each other um, hopefully they'll come up with something to make that uh, happen more often because you know that's what the fans want besides wrecking oh, yeah. Um, the fans, the fans love seeing seeing us run side by mm -hmm. side and then beating, and banging with each other. And when there's a car that's good and it gets trapped back in traffic, they want to be able to see it drive back up to the front. Right. And hopefully, we'll we'll get that. Yeah. Now, is there one thing maybe that you, if you could, if you were like the designer of all of this, that you'd change about these cars? Maybe just one element. Yeah. I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I like the fact that the cars look very much like the production cars. I love cars. that. That's so um, great. You know, our Ford Fusion looks very mm -hmm. much like the Ford Fusion on the showroom floor. So I really like that, and I hope that they don't mess that up. Um, but you know, if I, I, there's nothing that I know of that I that I could change to fix it, um, if I knew, I, I would voice my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I, I just don't know. Um, I'm not an engineer, and I don't understand exactly uh, what it's going to take to make that happen. But I know from sitting inside the race car holding the steering wheel, um, when I catch somebody, and when I get within three or four car lengths of them, and I can't pass them. I would like for that to change. Yeah, 
All right. You know, I have to say this. We're sitting here right now, and this amazing smell keeps wafting over here. Yeah. You've got a candle or something burning inside of your bus right now. Well, my wife takes care of my bus pretty good. She's doing a good my job. Home driver, it smells David. very festive in these parts. Da it's very David. Halloween fallish. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're gearing up for all the trick or treaters. I think. Ah. I think uh, uh, this is uh, Talladega, so normally we have a bunch <laughs> of trick or treaters, uh, kids come around to all the buses and stuff and collect candy. So. Uh, maybe my bus driver was gearing up for that. I think he's so getting nobody, ready for that. Well, yeah. so speaking of kids. It's better than dirty socks, right? Better than dirty socks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't like that smell at all. So no, no good. For everybody out there, my motorhome does not smell like dirty socks. No, it smells like apples and cinnamon. Yeah. It's delicious. All right, so speaking of kids and Halloween, your little one, Alex, yep. do you have a costume in mind? <laughs> yeah. Halloween? Yes, we do. He's going to be a cow. Oh, my gosh, yeah. that's too cute. My uh, my wife, Janice, she found a, uh, oh. she found a cow costume. Um, for him to wear. And, oh my and gosh, so, I love it. You have yeah. to post a photo on Twitter so we can I'm all sure see. I'm sure she will. Okay. I'm sure she will. I'm dying to see that. So. Are you going to dress up? Uh, no, I'm not. No? no. Not like a daddy cow? No. You're like a cow actually, family. Actually, I'm supposed to leave. I'm trying to figure out how I can be home for Halloween. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're, uh, we're supposed to leave that day to go to Texas. Right. So I might, uh, I might miss trick-or-treating. I hope I don't. Aw. Well, we're going to make up for it here this weekend with all the kids trick-or-treating. Okay. All right. Next question for you. From Joey Deschelles, who is your favorite driver growing up? It's a good question, Joey. Um, Joey. Dale Earnhardt was probably just because my family. My family was huge Dale Earnhardt fans. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a huge Dale Earnhardt fan. Um, at, you know, I was I was born in '84, so um, you know, growing up watching watching him race, uh, that was at the the prime. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I was old enough to understand the early 90s, you mm -hmm. know, that he was in his prime. And um, I remember watching Richard Petty as well. And I remember looking up to Richard, um, you know, all the fans. He was definitely the fan favorite, still is to this day. Um, and I remember looking up to him thinking, man, that's that guy is really special. And, and at the time, um, he was on he was on the the downward side of his career, getting ready mm -hmm. to retire. I think he retired in 94. Um, so. Dale Earnhardt was the kind of the guy then, so I, I really enjoyed watching him race. He was mm -hmm. always involved in controversy, mm -hmm. and he was always on TV. Whether he was running 15th or he was leading, he was always on TV because he was battling with somebody or mm -hmm. running into somebody. So um, as a kid, that was fun to watch. So you mentioned the 80s when you were born. Are you, do you think you're still like more of an 80s or a 90s kind of kid? I don't. I don't know. When I don't you know turn what either. On Sirius Radio. Are you yeah. going to the '80s station or the '90s station? Neither. Neither. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> what no. are you listening to then? Um, I don't know. I listen to some kind of weird music. Uh, I, I like a lot weird of acoustic. Music. I like a lot of acoustic music. Uh, just a guy sitting with his guitar singing. All right. Um, not necessarily country, um, but along those lines. Just, just good old singer-songwriter type singer stuff. Singer-songwriter type stuff, okay. yeah. It's more of like a mellow then, type Yeah, I'm type a real music. mellow kind of guy. With your so, apple cinnamon candle yeah. going. I can just picture it now. Yeah. It's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful scene you've got going Yoga, on. Yoga's coming up when, when you leave. So, and yoga? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I gotta get right. Got to get my chi gotta right for chi. practice. Oh, that's so important. I agree with that. You, or you could bust out your uh, your bike, your cycle. What do they call it? What do you call it? A bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what we Bicycle, call Bicycle, but is there is there a certain term? Is yeah. there Okay, actually we're having bicicleta. a debate about this earlier. Is the it bicicleta? Bicicleta? Yeah. Oh, okay. In Espanol. Ooh. But also got, known as also known as bicycle. Here. Okay. Yeah. But is it road bike or is it are you like a road biker or a cyclist if you do ride these bicycles on the road? They are one and in the same. One and the same. If you ride a road bike. Ha. People over here were having a conversation earlier. If you ride a road bike like that, I um, think it could be a you, you would be considered a cyclist. Okay. Yes. All right. I think we both got that one right, folks over there. All I right. I wouldn't take any credit for getting that right. I'm sorry, bro. Aw. All right. Well, on that <laughs> note, moving along, FireGuy199 wants to know, what's it like driving for the king? What did he, What's his name? FireGuy199. Or 119. 119. 119. You know, if you were dyslexic, that would be. Nine one one, fire guy. Fire guy nine one one. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was his question? He wants to know, what's it like driving for the king? It's, it's fun. Um, you know, Richard's uh, Richard's probably the most iconic 
guy in our in our sport mm -hmm. and, and certainly the car that i'm driving is the most iconic car in our sport so um it really is a privilege to get to drive that car and it's a it's an honor to get to drive uh, for him you know he's he's the king he's mm -hmm. the king of nascar and he's accomplished so much in our sport and to have the opportunity to to have him in your ear giving you advice and um you know to, to drive his race car is really special so mm -hmm. um definitely a lucky guy what's the best piece of advice that he's given you so far you know i think the biggest thing that he doesn't i don't think one thing that he's said to me has been the best just collectively i think the the thing that he stresses the most is uh being prepared you know okay. him and dale inman you know over all those years uh they were just really prepared uh they showed up to the racetrack with uh the best stuff that they could show up with and they were prepared they didn't have a lot of failures they didn't mm -hmm. have parts failures and stuff like that and that was what led to a lot of their success and um you know i think that's the one thing that i take away from him the most is the uh the ability to prepare each and every single week mm -hmm. to, to show up with, with the best stuff you have. Okay, good answer. Thanks. Our next question comes from Drive for 524. How will you celebrate your first win this weekend? Oh, was that the same guy that asked? If uh, I was... Let's see, he did ask a question earlier. He asked you about the Gen 6 car. Oh, okay. So he's, he's shaking it up a little bit. All right. Um, so how'd you celebrate your first win this weekend? You know, I, uh, Richard's, uh, Richard's very big on, especially Dale Inman, are, they're very big on if I win a race, mm -hmm. um, to please don't do a burnout. They, they're, don't do a burnout? Yeah, they, this is what Dale Inman always says. Dale Inman says, have you ever seen the guy, the jockey that's won the Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby ever get off and start beating the crap out of his horse? Oh, that's so different though. And I said, no. No? And he said, well, that's your horse. That's what right. just took you to victory lane. So don't beat the crap out of it. When you say it that way tear it up so um so i don't know i'd have to i'd have to be creative i got i got a couple things in mind but i don't want to let the cat out of the bag right. Every, everybody will find out when I, when i win my first race we'll just have to find out and see okay i really want to find out now okay all right i do too yeah so let's make it happen our next question comes from mike eric how do you think you will work with sammy johns for the next few races um i think it'll be good um sammy's got experience as a mm -hmm. crew chief so um, he's, it's not his first time uh, doing it, so I think, uh, I think it's going to be good. Uh, you know, I think it'll be a challenge for sure. It's mm -hmm. not, not going to be something that's uh, going to be easy. It'll be something that we have to work through. And, but change is uh, sometimes inevitable, and, and mm -hmm. things, uh, things happen for a reason. So mm -hmm. um, I'd love nothing more than to go to Victory Lane right here this weekend mm -hmm. with Sammy Johns as my crew chief. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we got a great team. we got great sponsors, and um, we... we we need to perform for those guys, and so um, I think we can get the job done. Mm -hmm. I think you can too. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what you do outside of racing. I know okay. that you you're busy um, yep. keeping yourself active and fit. Yep. This is we where that whole bicycle thing comes into play. We talked a little bit about the bicycle thing. Yep. Now you and Jimmy flew in this morning, but you also yep. bike together too. Is we that do. true? Yep, we do. He's uh, he enjoys bicycling as much as I do, mm -hmm. um, and so it's uh, it's something that's a good way for us to go out and get away from the racetrack and kind of clear your head and. We, uh, we typically go on Saturdays mm -hmm. uh, after practice, and uh, we just, we really enjoy it. I don't, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We go out and ride 50, 60, 70 miles. Mm -hmm. It takes, you know, three or four hours, and, and you get a group of guys. We get some of the guys, uh, the mechanics on some of the other teams, uh, they'll go with us, and you get a group of five or six guys to go out and ride for that long together. There's, uh, there's a camaraderie, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it, it, uh, it really, it really helps me just clear my head. It, it helps you get away from just always being stressed about my car's doing this, or I got this thing to do for my sponsor, or I got this to do for media. Um, it's just a good way to get away and, and kind of stay sane. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we both really enjoy cycling. There's a few other drivers that do it as well, and um, we all try and get out and go ride as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of riding, I know that you've got a little tricycle yeah. here. Are you are you training the little one right now? Well, getting him ready to go out with dad. You know, he he doesn't quite have it figured out how to uh, <laughs> use the pedals, but he he puts his feet on those little pads and lets Aww. me push him around the, the motorhome a lot. Um, That's too cute. Yeah, he gets he gets cabin fever. You know, the bus is only so entertaining for so mm -hmm. long. So um, we get him out on that, and he he loves it. He likes being outside. Uh, he mm -hmm. gets that uh, honestly from his dad. You know, just being outside, being out and seeing people and being out in the sunshine and um, 
he just really enjoys it. So we take him out and cruise him around the motorhome lot and let him stroll for chicks. Now, ooh, I see. <laughs> he's a, he's him a, nice and early. He'll, he be, is, uh, he'll be a he lady is, killer. He's a good chick magnet. Oh, I'm Every, sure. Er, all the girls <laughs> wave to him, and he's, he's already got it figured out how to wave back. And, oh. Yeah. See, he's got, he's got see, you already. He's working on me. He's not even here. <laughs> all right, so obviously you're, you're a great dad. You love your son. What do you I do, do when he's not here at the track? I mean, do you FaceTime with him and we, your family? We or? wear FaceTime out. You wear FaceTime yes. out. Okay. Yes, we do. Um, you know, that as long as my Sprint Wi-Fi is working, there you um, go. We, we, wear, we wear FaceTime out. So it's... Um, Unlimited, by the way. I know. Unlimited time on that on that FaceTime. That's right. With our data plan. Well, mm -hmm. it's you could tell that we obviously have it unlimited by the as often as we use it. <laughs> um, we we do. I, I enjoy that. I, I, you know, the weekends that he doesn't go, I typically leave on a Thursday and don't come home till late mm -hmm. Sunday night. So, um, it kind of stinks to to not get to see him for basically four days. So, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's great to be able to have that technology. You know, ten years ago, I don't know what people did. They just didn't see their kids you know so mm -hmm. I get to watch him play I'll, I'll call and my wife will hand him the phone and he'll walk around the house with looking at me and then he'll throw me on the floor oh. and, but um but it's <laughs> well, fun. You have a good protected case on your sprint phone then. I do. Okay yeah that's I do. key with a little one around. Yep and uh and drool proof as and well. And drool proof too but, yes. You know it's it's fun to, to be able to watch him grow up it sometimes I get disappointed that I'm watching my son grow up on mm -hmm. FaceTime, but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's part of the job, and and I'm glad I'm thankful that I, at least I get to see him on FaceTime. Absolutely. All right, our next question comes from Double O Joe, who wants to know what is your favorite thing to eat that includes your sponsor, for example, what bacon-oriented dish? Yeah. Bacon's good on everything. It what really, is it not good on? Is a better question. To be honest with you, I've not found one thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I I think uh, you put bacon on any sandwich, it's good. You put bacon with brec any breakfast, uh, it's good, whether it's eggs or French toast or whatever. You put bacon on anything, it's good. You put bacon in your soup, you put bacon on, wrap it in your pork. Um, you know what, we have that a lot. Our truck driver cooks uh, an awesome pork tenderloin and wraps it in bacon. Uh, it's one of my favorite meals that he cooks on the, on the truck. So um, certainly, I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything else is, is my favorite other than Smithfield uh, bacon. So. That would uh, that would certainly be a favorite. No, it's not even a sponsor plug. I literally eat bacon three three meals a day. I love um, bacon. You know, every once in a while, I, I'll I'll take a break from it, but not for long. I think it's good in doses. You well, know? the thing is, like, is that it's good at every meal. It's not just it's bacon for breakfast, mm -hmm. bacon on a sandwich for lunch, and you can figure out a way to get bacon in oh, there at dinner time. Ice cream. Time. Yeah. I'm thinking dessert. I'm going straight for the sweet stuff. Yeah. All right, that's a great note, I think, to end things on because, okay. unfortunately, we are all out of time. So thanks so much, guys, for submitting your questions online, and thanks so much, Eric, for hanging out here with us in Talladega. Good luck this weekend. We hope we get to see what your celebration sort of victory dance right. will be. thank you. We'll be looking out for you. And you're welcome to ride the tricycle later with us when we go cycling if you'd like. All right, that'll be my ride out of here. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.